Hi, everyone. We're here at the Conneaut Lake Volunteer Fire Department, where we often do some of our filming for my dog and me. And tonight, today we have with us again Robin Peterson. She is going to explain some things about Lyric, her eight-month-old Golden, which is what we've been trying to do here, showing you as the audience what's it like, what it is like to start with a young dog and then to work your way through their different stages of development. But before we do that, I always ask Robin to do this and to get involved with this because you might not know this, but something we want to make sure everybody that's listening knows is that Robin does own Red Ball Dog Academy. So take two minutes and tell us about that. Okay. Red Ball Dog Academy is a local training um, school. just has a kind of fancy name. Um, I hold my classes right here at Station 2 um, in Conneaut Lake. There are six-week sessions um, where you come and we work with you and your dog. The classes work an hour um, each week. Um, it's one day a week for six weeks, and we have skill levels from very beginning to advanced. We also have um, some creative classes. We have a games class. We do rally obedience, and um, we just um, let you come. We teach you how to communicate with your dog, how to train your dog. We're going to be working some training with Lyric here in a little bit, um, showing you what she knows, what she doesn't know. Hush. Um, and you can see how we work and how we do things. And um, we try to make it fun for both you and your dog and try to take a lot of that frustration away that comes with a puppy. How many years have you been training? I've been training since 1995, so you do the math. That many years? Yeah. 25 years of it's experience. A long time. OK, well, then that's time. a good reason to have you here. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so how old is Lyric now? Lyric is going to be eight months old next month. Okay, and, and we're going to talk about some of the things that occur with what, a six month old to an eight month a old? A six month to an eight month, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. um, besides the fact that she's waiting there patiently. Impatiently. We, impatient? Yeah, I might, have pretty to, good, I might have to take her out in a little bit. Um, just, for, just for the viewers to know, um, I do not bring Lyric to class with me. Um, this is her first time in this building, um, so she's a little not sure of the environment, which is normal for a puppy that's never been somewhere. Down, please. But she goes places, there. but she's never Down. been at this particular place. She's never place. been at this particular okay. place. Right. Yeah. So, and in my um, haste to get here, I did not, bad owner, bring her a chew toy or something to um, have in her crate. So. Okay, so when but. should a dog, let's go back. When should a dog, maybe we talked about this in our first program, when should a dog actually start training? What's it based on? Um, ideally. Formal, formal training. Ideally, eight weeks. Okay. Ideally. Sometimes veterinarians and trainers butt heads on that um, due to vaccinations, but there is a socialization window that happens between eight weeks old and 12 weeks old. And if you wait until you have all of the shot series finished, you miss that developmental window. Okay, and let's say that, for instance, I know whenever we're filming this that you're not going to be having any classes in August. Right, we start back up in September. So if someone is going to miss something because of either Christmas or a holiday or since it's August and stuff like that, do you have any alternative that the owner can do Always. to get at least started on their own mm -hmm. before they get into a formal right. class? And what would that alternative um, be? I do private lessons. Okay. Um, we're going to come up with this, you know, it's Red Ball Dog Academy, so all of our classes are school-based, like um, if you were going to a school. So we do tutoring. We do private lessons, so we call them tutoring, where um, I either come to your home or um, we meet somewhere. A lot of times we meet at the parks, Roach Park, um, Lions Park in Cockerton, Diamond in, in um, Meadville. Well, we can meet someplace like that if you would like, or we can meet um, at your at their homes, and we do one on one. Okay, so if my dog is ten or ten weeks of age, and there's no class coming up, and she's going to be twelve or thirteen weeks of age by the time you're going to have a formal class, they should call you. Yes. And then hopefully you can do a private for them, and then you would give them ideas of what to work on right. before they gain to the actual so class. So when they come to class, um, some of it might be repetitive from a private, a beginning private lesson to the beginning class stage. However, the environment is different, the distraction level is different, so that dog is a little bit ahead of the other dogs in class if the, if the um, owner has done their homework in the fact that the dog knows what it's supposed to do. 
the challenge for the owner, the handler at that point is, can they get their dog's focus and their dog's attention in, an, in a very high um, distraction environment? And how many dogs are normally in a class? Never more than eight. Eight dogs in a class? And so I have an assistant to help me. Um, because eight is a big number. So there are two of us. If, um, say, if you were in the class with Danny, um, like Danny needs any help, but if you were in the class, you need help. So I need help. If, if you were in the class with Danny and you were struggling with something, um, either Chelsea or I would step over and help you, and the other person would keep the rest of the class moving. So we, I don't like downtime, so we try very hard not to have downtime. Okay, so now we're, so we're back to, um, what are we doing about this puppy over this here? Puppy this puppy over uh, here. Um, oh, excited. Some, She's into something. Some, it's her ball. Okay. Some days um, we're into putting her um, out by the road with a free sign around her. <laughs> I do that sometimes some, too. Some days, some days. So um, Lyric is my sixth golden retriever. Same as me. Sixth. And he's my sixth uh, collie. No, not all at one time. Oh. That's the difference between the two of us. <laughs> no, no, I started my first one when I was 15. Okay. So it's been over a period. But unfortunately, I've got a total of five right now, which yeah. is not well, good. Well, she, I have three right now, which in my, in, in my living space is not really ideal, but I wasn't passing her up. So, um, so she is my sixth golden retriever. So I'm not new to the world of goldens and, and the things about them. However, she's, she's very, very different than any of the ones I've ever had. And they're all different. They all mm -hmm. have their own personality and their own quirks and their own things. But this one is, is um, she's just in a league of her own. Uh, and I'm struggling. I'm struggling with things that my, that my students struggle with. Um, and my tricks aren't all working. So uh, this is raw and this is real. And you're going to see some things as I work her that I'm trying to work through with her. Um, my my goldens have always um, gone out on free runs, and they never go too far. They go so far, they turn around, they check in, and they come back to me, and they come back to me, and they come back to me. She's been 98% reliable on her recall. Recall is coming back to you. Um, she's been 98% reliable on that in a contained controlled environment. In fenced other words, in yard. fenced in yard, inside my house, inside okay. my, my, my indoor training room, um, in a water area. Um, when we're doing, when we're, um, I don't know if you've watched the beginning one with growing up with Lyric, but I'm training her to hunt something that I've never ever mm -hmm. done before and I'm totally out of my comfort zone. Um, but she has to do water retrieves. When she's in the water, when she comes out of the water, she comes straight back to me. My problem is when she's in an open field. Uh, the recall, the first part of the recall, a recall is two parts. One is to go out and retrieve whatever is, is, or the retrieve is two parts. Go out and retrieve whatever is out there. The second part is to bring it back. She starts back, but then there's this detour that she takes, <laughs> and she's gone. She's just, she's just gone. Does she have the item so, in her mouth? Yes. This time, oh, she mm -hmm. Yes, she and, and she's very happy with it, <coughs> and she's dancing and jumping, and, and I'm, I'm invisible. Frustrated because you can't mm, get it. It's it's a challenge. It's a real challenge. So um, so we're working. We're really really working hard on that. And to say that I'm not frustrated would be a bold lie. Um, so we're working. We're working to get that. I've never had to work so hard for that before. Okay. So the average dog that would be between six and eight months of age. Where do you start? What should they people be doing with that dog? Well, here's, here's, what, here's what comes into play with puppies. When you first, if you get a puppy eight weeks old from a breeder or eight weeks old from, it's, it doesn't have to be a purebred dog, but an eight week old puppy, and you bring it to your home, you just took it away from its mom, the only environment it has ever known, and its litter mates. So that puppy then fixates on you, mm -hmm. and you become its world. So if, you know, that, that, that puppy follows you. That puppy follows you everywhere you go. If you make kissy noises, clap your hands, that puppy comes to you, comes to you, comes to you, comes to you, because, because you are now their safety. You are the only thing that's familiar to them in this big new world, and it's right there, right there, right there. And your first thought is, oh. 
Look at how nice that puppy is and that how good, really good it comes. What a good mm -hmm. puppy that is. How long does that last? Um, about two months, maybe. But they're pretty good at coming to you. Yes, because this is why we teach socialization, which is very, very important in the development mm -hmm. of a puppy so that your dog grows up to be non-reactive. Non-reactive, non-fearful, um, get it out in the world and let it experience the world so it's not afraid of things, so it, it's not reactive. That's a good thing, and, and it's, it, it's, it's crucial. It's crucial that you do it. However, for every good thing that we do with our dogs, it sometimes can create a problem. We train to teach our dogs to think. I don't want to micromanage my dogs. I don't want to tell my dogs every little thing that I want them to do. So we train in a technique that teaches the dog to anticipate the behavior that we want and just do it. Here's what can happen, and I'll give you a quick example. Cicely is my middle golden retriever. She's heading for five. And I taught her to ring a bell to go out to pee. Mm -hmm. Good idea, right? If you can't see your dog um, by the door or you're busy doing something, then they need to go out to go to the bathroom and they ring a bell. Oh, my dog needs to go out. Less accidents works very well. By all of my doors that go out into my dog yard is a treat container. We call it a cookie jar for the dogs. My dogs always get a reward for going out and going to the bathroom and coming back in. It doesn't matter if they're eight weeks old or they're 12. It's rewarded. Mine do too, yes. all the time. Yes. So um, about six months ago, um, late evening, you know, end of the day, you're, you're tired, you finally sit down. I sat down and ding. <sighs> Cicely has to go outside. I get up. I go to the door, I open the door, she backs up four steps, looks up at me, looks over at the cookie jar, looks back up at me. The dog learned something. She desired a cookie. So her thought process, because we've taught her how to mm -hmm. think, says, I want a cookie. How do I tell mom I want a cookie? I know. I ring the bell, it brings mom to the cookie jar. I look at the cookie jar that tells mom what I want, and she'll give me a cookie. Score. Mine do it just a little bit different. Pretty inv inventive, absolutely, right? Absolutely, absolutely. But what Roscoe does is, he stands there and tells me, once they all go out, let's say, at 9 o'clock the last time out, then he starts about 20 after 9, 9.30, and every time he keeps on watching me, and then he tells me he has to go out again. He doesn't have to go out. He goes out, stands, smell the air, smells the air, comes back in. He thinks he's going to get a treat. Because he didn't even go. Sure. She, so that becomes a real issue with him. If they associate that if I go out and come back in, man, I'm going to get a treat. She doesn't, but in this, in this instance, that's a fake out, and they'll do that. But this I get wasn't, a lot of those. This wasn't even a fake out. This was, this was deliberate, I want a cookie. This was deliberate, get me to the cookie jar. This was deliberate thinking, and I rewarded it. And now I say, no, you didn't need to go out, you're not getting a cookie. <laughs> I had to stop it, but I rewarded it in the first be mm -hmm. time because that was, that was fantastic mm -hmm. thinking. However, so, we, so for every good thing we do, there can be a glitch. And that was the glitch on that. That was, that was, that was, and that was genius, that was really good. But, but it can't become a habit. You cannot call me to give you a cookie every five minutes. We could tell everybody, so, as we take a little break in the action here, what you've done to my dog, Danny. I did not do What that you did. Danny visits at the, can't, or at the hospital, and we go with Robin and whoever she has with her, whether it's Ella or Cicely, and Danny is always laying down. That's a joke. Everybody that knows Danny knows that if I'm someplace, whenever I stand and talk to people, immediately Danny sits down, lays on his side, and that's it. So he didn't want to get up. So I says, Danny, get now, up. Now, wait a second. We have, to, we have to fix this. He doesn't get up. We're in the middle of a hospital, and this woman will just take her leash and drag him down the hall. Which I've done. Yes, that's doesn't what I said. Up. So So she says he needs smelling salts. Mm -hmm. He needs it's a, a treat. So the theory was she would go over and put a treat by his nose, and he would immediately jump yes, up. Yes, he did. So now his trick is, once I give him the first treat at the hospital, and this is the only place it really happens, the first treat at the hospital, he thinks that every time I lay down now, um, the only way I'm going to get up is if you give me a treat. But it's reversed. The, the it's all mixed up. The difference was I didn't give him the cookie. You give him the cookie. Oh. That was the difference. You didn't tell me that part. But here's the funny thing. Can I tell him the funny thing? Sure. We're leaving the hospital one day, 
and he laid down in the middle of Liberty Street and he wouldn't get up and there were cars coming and they're stopping and she's there stomping her feet because he wouldn't get up. She didn't have, she didn't, his, right. she didn't have any treats in her Laying pocket. Laying on his side, that's what he does. I was in the park, I was on the other side of the street in the parking lot crying. And if you're not nearby whenever he doesn't get up, then I do the old classic, let's give him a pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I give him so. a quick pop and then he says, oh, my yeah. brain's back in gear so I'm ready to go. Okay, let's talk okay. about this. What All do right. we have here? So, so this is so this is where you're at. So from a puppy, in that time period, um, you're their world. As we socialize them and we teach them about the world, they become more confident, more secure, and they're not afraid of things. So therefore, they don't need you as much to be their safety. Mm -hmm. They know that you're there, and they're braver, and they explore more. Hence the, I don't need to be right at your side, I can go explore, I can get further away from you. They're, they're not afraid to run off a little bit, um, or a lot. Um, you're not the center of mm -hmm. their world anymore. You have to work harder and harder and harder to be better than the things that are happening out and around you. And that's, that's why the bond between you and your dog has got to be very, very solid and very, mm -hmm. very strong. Um, so we work that every, every day. We work that every day. Um, and, and I do have two other dogs in my house, and they do play together. And they will tell you that if you're gonna use a dog for a sport, you really should never let them bond to other dogs and play with other dogs. And I get that theory, and I understand it, and I see how it works. However, it can't happen in my house. My dogs have to be able to be together. Do you have treats in your pocket all the time? I do not. Um, I, I when do. you're outside working with this little When I'm over working here, with her. What if you just let her yes. outside, now you're going to call her, or you're going to be in the section of the yard and you call her. If she comes to you, does she get a treat? If, if I'm deliberately working her, I have cookies with me. If I'm not deliberately working her, no. If she comes to me, then there's all kinds of praise. Let's, let's classify treats. Because there are people out there who says, I'm not giving my dog a cookie every time. Or I'm not walking around with a bag full of treats. I, I have a treat bag on my, my or I'm going to have a treat bag on my side. You'll see it in a few minutes. Um, I don't wear that at home. I, I don't. But here's the thing about treats. This is, what, this is what you need to know. Years ago when we trained, we compelled our dogs to do what we wanted them to do. I'm talking 20 years ago. It was how training was done. You ask them to do something, if they didn't do it, you physically made them do it. Mm -hmm. You physically put them in the position and you gave them a pop on their collar. And it taught the dog, if you didn't want that to happen, you hurried up and you did what you were supposed to do. They didn't have to think about it, they just did it. Science has proven that that's not the way you're supposed to do it, that a dog will respond better through positive reinforcement. Mm -hmm. So, Which doesn't always have to be treats. It doesn't always have to be treats. Okay. It can be verbal praise. It can be physical praise. It can be treats. Most dogs are food driven. Mm -hmm. Most dogs are highly food driven and, they, and they'll work for it. So here's, here's what I tell my students about cookies. And when I say cookies, please realize I'm talking dog treats, not Oreos, all right? So treats are this. Number one, they're information for dogs. We talk, they bark. You have no idea what Danny is saying to those cars as they come into the bark park and he's barking at them. When you are ranting and raving at Danny, he has no idea what you're saying. No. He hears Charlie Brown's teacher going wah, 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 wah. And he says, it's time for me to run and bark. So, so we're people, they're dogs, they need to stay dogs, they can never be people, please don't make them one. They don't understand, but they like food. Mm -hmm. None of us, I don't care who you are, none of us would go to work if it wasn't for our paychecks. That's true. We so would, the paycheck we to would, a dog is their cookies. The treat. If we didn't if we didn't have to work for a paycheck, we would all be doing what we want to do. It's information, it's their paycheck, it's training wheels on a bicycle. They eventually go away. But if you take them away too fast, just like training wheels on a bicycle, you're going to wreck. Mm -hmm. So cookies, cookies are information to your dog. You deliver it as soon as they do it right. And your dog goes, oh, that was good. What do I have to do to do that? 
Oh, I sit and I get a cookie. Cool. I like that. I'm going to sit because that gets me something that's good. Mm -hmm. I'll work for that. And you're going to see in a few minutes. I'm going to do some. I'm going to do some clicker work. Um, I like to train with a clicker at home. I wish I could train with a clicker in class, but there's. It, when people are first starting out and they're trying to figure out where do I hold my leash, where do I put my dog, where, how do I hold the treats, and you want me to put that thing in my and hand to do that? And the clickers are going everywhere. It, yeah, it, it's too <laughs> it's too hard to do it in a in a you can, the dogs can handle all the clickers going off, but the people can't handle all the clickers mm -hmm. going off. Um, but a clicker, um, we'll we'll just explain this really quick. A clicker is just an audible sound that the dog is right, and the sound is followed by a reward. Now, for those of you listening that have never seen a clicker, used a clicker, and, and you're gonna see it here in a little bit, please don't go out to the store, buy a clicker, and come home and just start using it. Um, if your dog has never been around a clicker before, um, it has to be charged first, um, just like we charge our phones or whatever. It only has to be charged one time, but to charge a clicker, you very simply sit on the floor with your dog, you click it, and you offer them a reward. And you do it about six times. The dog doesn't have to do a darn thing. You're just gonna make the noise, hand them a cookie. Make the noise, hand them a cookie. Make the noise, hand them a cookie. All of a sudden the dog goes, oh, when I hear that noise, I get something good. Hmm. This is not a command. Please understand this. This is not a command. I have had people who say, I went to the store and got a clicker, and when I want my dog to come in, I stand at the door and I click, and my dog comes flying in, it's wonderful. This is not a command. You want your dog to come in, you, you say your dog's name, so your dog comes to you, or you say come, or you say here, or whatever, don't click. Because this, this doesn't mean come, this just means you're right. Mm -hmm. uh, because we can teach dogs to get in a box with this. Just stand in a box for no reason whatsoever, and never have to speak. Never have to say a word, just use this. So if they come, as soon as they come yeah, to you, or I as can, they're on their way to you, can you can click because okay. you're telling them they're right. So here's, here's a quick thing, real quick. I was having trouble with Cicely taking a jump. I was trying to get her to jump, because in rally there's jumps. And she, she hated it. She would get to it and she'd refuse it. She'd get to it and refuse it. So I'm working it, I'm working it. And I got her jumping in our training room. I, I just, you know, she'd go over the jump, I'd click. She'd go over the jump, I'd click. I got her, she did 18 jumps in a row. Good job, whoa hoo. I went down the next day, I started to do her back to the same thing as she wasn't. And I was getting, I, did, I couldn't figure out what I was doing. So I talked to a friend of mine, she goes, when are you clicking? I said, when she, take, when she does the jump. And she said, no, you need to click when she commits to the jump. My timing on the clicker was off. Oh, so it So be... as she approached the jump and went like this, like she leaned into it, that's when I needed to click. Not after she was going over it, as she approached, yes, and it worked. Wow. So it's the timing of the clicker that helps. And really, if you're going to get a clicker and work it, you really should have somebody that has some experience with a clicker at least walk you through it a couple times. Do you times. have uh, training that is based entirely on using the clicker? I offer it. Nobody ever signs up for it. I don't think that I wouldn't have because I've never heard this total explanation before. And I think it uh, certainly yeah, has some yeah. merit it's, to it. It's, a, it's, it's just a fun, it's fun. Ask anybody who takes your dogs to the highest levels, and most of us will use mm -hmm. clickers. Um, it's just, it's, it's not confusing to the dog. Again, talk, bark, this is clear. Mm -hmm. This is how they train the dolphins, this is how they train the whales, this is how, yeah. and that's where this got started with. Um, so this, this just lets them know that they're right. Do I carry cookies around all the time? No. Um, sometimes it's just a, if I don't have a cookie on me, it's just a good, it's just a good right. physical praise. Um, and with this, once they understand it, it doesn't have to be click, treat. It can be click, now let's go get a cookie. It mm -hmm. doesn't have to be right there. Okay. Um, but eventually it all goes away. I am not that trainer who doesn't tell my dogs no. I am, I didn't raise my children that way and I won't raise my dogs that way. I am, however, that trainer that will never, ever, ever correct a dog until I am 150% sure that they understand what I'm asking them to mm -hmm. do. I will not correct a dog that does not understand. That, that's just wrong, mm -hmm. that's just wrong. So um, if they totally know what you're asking them to do and you ask them to do it and they look at you and go, 
That's different. That's different. There's refusal. There is refusal. Okay, we ready to try so. this, some of this stuff? Um, yep. Let's try and get her out of it. We paper. can do that. So let's take this table and, well, let's explain a couple things here real quick. All right, so training her to hunt. I have a bunch of different things on here, and I just wanted to show you a couple things that are interesting. These are all bumpers. These are all retrieving tools that a hunting dog has to do. They have to retrieve bumpers on land and in water, and then birds. Um, now these bumpers are two inch bumpers, and I just found out I now need three inch bumpers. And you can see that they're different colors and different shapes. This bumper is sh shaped this way. Um, it's easier for the dog to pick up and carry. It, it was a nice bumper to get when she was losing her baby teeth. Mm -hmm. It was more comfortable for her to hold. Um, we have hit a stage in her training where she dislikes all bumpers. She's just not real fond of them right now, so we're using other things just to keep her going. A retrieve is a retrieve. In the water, it doesn't matter what I throw, she'll go get it. She, she loves water retrieves. White ones, um, can be used anywhere. Here's the interesting thing. This orange one, they discourage orange ones to be used in the grass or on land. Dogs can't see this color. Oh, I never thought about that. I didn't know that. So that was really interesting. I bet so, my dogs can see that so color. So this is hard for them, this is hard for them to find in the fields and in the grass. So, um, so that's those. This is called the duckin. I, I think we used this once last time. She, she'll retrieve this some days over these just because it's more like a duck and she does love her ducks. So, um, isn't this cute? Not really, but she likes this. It's like a dead duck. It, well, it's a chicken in a bikini. <laughs> um, she, she likes playing with this right now. Um, she likes playing with this milk, um, in this milker insert and, and these things. So, I don't know why my tick key was in my stuff, but it is. But if you're working your dogs in the fields, you should always have a tick key with you. So, um, we're just gonna first start, and I'm just gonna show you some basic obedience things that every pet owner, every pet owner um, should be working on. And then if there's some time allotment, we might show you a few of our hunting things that we're working on. Okay, let's okay. do it. All right, let's get this table out of the way. Do we have to move the table? Yes, because we're gonna work right here. Oh. Okay, okay. so we'll just set the table over here. Why are we working over here so instead of in the middle? Because the, the middle's, the wall's helpful. The wall's helpful. The wall's yeah, helpful. That's why I was asking you that. Yeah, the wall's helpful. Okay. All right, so we'll just do this. You get those chairs, I'll get her and move the crate. This is like a wardrobe change. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to mess that thing up. And how is Lyric now? Lyric will be... Eight months. Eight months. Next week. She'll be eight months next week. Mm -hmm. Hi, baby. <clears throat> you go. Lyric. Thank you. Good. Do you have to tell her when she's allowed Break. out? What did you say? Break. Break. Is I that for the hunting or is that off. just in general that you've done that? No, that is that off. That is that is normal that is normal crate games. That's normal crate games. So now she's excited because she just came out of there. Here. And this this is one of those things. Good. This is one of those things that we're working on is the excitement level of when people come or you first come home. Um, her jumping, her jumping is outrageous. Um, so, so we suggest then if I, if you know I'm coming collar. to your house and I'm going to walk in, she's gonna jump on me, you put a leash on her, you sit I her down. put a collar and a leash on her, stop, he's and a And you tell me not to touch her until she's sitting down and right. she is calmed right. down. Right, right, okay. right. So, um, one of the things, good sit. Oh, that's pretty with your ear inside out. Here, over here. Over here, here, heel, sit, yes. Now, I teach heel. Heel is a position, not a movement, and heel is just specifically your dog at your leg. Heel is 
traditional heel is left side, so my leash is in my right hand, and if I need it, my cookie is in my left. Are you ready? Are you ready? We're going to heel to the end of that room and back up. Can you look? No, here. So if I'm moving, she needs to move. If I'm not moving, she needs to sit. Are you ready? And hey, heel. That's good girl. No jumping. Ready? Right back. Fix it. She has that little hop, and yes. that's because she's so pumped up. I've been, yes, and, and that's the other thing. Good girl, good girl. The other thing is, before we go out to train, I am to get her in a heightened state because we want them to be able to listen to us off. Now, you're, wait, wait, you're talking about the average person that has a dog, the dog should be in a heightened state before they come to training class? If they're ready to, if they think they can do that. When I have eight dogs in this room, that's hard. But when you're working at home, it's a collar, so quit, like, quit that. Um, sit, wait. Because when I'm out in the field, I need her to be able to listen to me even if she's over her threshold in excitement. I need her to be able to hear me. So before we even start, we do this. Ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you want to play? 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 Okay, okay, okay. Ready? Ready? Sit. Yes. Let's go. Ready? And sit. Yes. Ready? Let's go. Ready? 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 Sit. Ready? And if she breaks down. the sit, yes. then you immediately put her yes. back in it. Yes. I help And her. continue. I just help her. Good down. Good down. And, and we're starting. So her heel is pretty ready. Heel. And stop. And sit. Yes, good girl. We're good look. We're her heel is her heel is progressing nicely. I'm pleased with where she's at with that. She she hasn't worn this well, collar. Well she certainly forever. focuses on you. Yes. Look at that, That's my gosh. The other thing, the other thing that we teach really um, we really work on. Will you stop with the collar? The other thing that we work on really, really well. Um, sit, hey, sit, is for them to look at us. We actually teach this, um, and we start quite simply, she knows it, but I'll show you how we, we start it. We take a cookie from their nose, slowly up to our nose, look, yes, and we teach them to look at us. There are times, just like a mother will tell a child, look at me when I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what we did. Did you drop the piece? You did. Okay. So we're starting on her hand signals also, and this is something that we're just starting on. So she's not, Lyric, leave your collar alone. <sighs> Children. There, is that better? Is that better? I should brought the collar you always wear. Wouldn't be so bad. All right, ready? Yes. Ready? Lyric. Good. Good girl. This one's hard. Coming back up is hard. Lyric. Yes, good girl. So I reward this one because that one's hard. I didn't reward the other two because she knows them. So she's learning sit and down with just hand signals. Stop with the collar. So those are things she knows. The other thing that we're working on is her stop. Sit, wait, is her weight. Now, I am trying really hard with this one. Good sit. See, I'm putting pressure on it. Good sit, and she's not breaking. Good sit. And then I do crazy things. Sit. Oh. Good girl, sit. Oh, good girl, sit. Now, are these all good things people sit. would learn at the first class? Good sit. In kindergarten? This part puppy? right here. This is second class. This, this part is second class. First class, first class we learn heel, we learn focus word, we start with the hand signals, we learn down, we learn food dish manners, we learn crate games. Um, what? <laughs> Why are you bugged? We learn um, leave it. I'm um, trying to think of what else we learn. We learn wait to go through the doorway. Uh, nobody wants their dogs mowing them down as they go out a door, so we teach them to wait to go through the door. Um, so we, we teach that. 
Um, trying to think of what my other thing is. But those are the things that we learn first level. Second level, we learn lots of little things, but the two major, major things that we work on second level is stay and come. We introduce them first level, but we introduce them like week five. And the reason for that is this has to be built slow and steady. It's not something that you can do that you can do really, really quickly. So I'm in your training class. Should I spend an hour with my Thanks, dog every day working on things? No. How long should I spend? Three, five minutes here, three, five minutes there. As often as I can every as day. As often yeah. as you can every day. This is, this is what I tell people. We all, we're all busy. We, we all live in a world of, uh, my plate cannot hold one more thing. And now I have this puppy and you want me to, you want me to work it and train it how? So, ladies, we all have things that we have to do around the house every day. We have laundry to do, we have cooking to do, we have whatever. So fit this into what you normally do. That's how I do it, because I sure and heck don't have, I, I just don't have extra time. I have a load of laundry, I'm taking that laundry basket into my bedroom. Who's gonna heal with me? And I ask one of my dogs to heal as I carry that laundry basket into my bedroom. Then I ask him to do a sit or a down while I put that away. Oh, good girl, down. I, why I put it away. You have toast in the toaster. They can do a sit or they can do a down or you can practice the focus word while the coffee is making. So there's, here, there's all those things that you can just put into your day here, there, just little bits and pieces. What, are you bored? You know, okay. I wanted to here. ask you about here. something else and I remember you once shared this with me. I can't remember even how long ago it was. Ready? But we were talking about the importance of okay. training with dogs and taking your classes or any of the other ones that are on because it doesn't, in all reality, it doesn't matter where you take the training class, no. just take the training take class. Take one, please. You've got to. That's so yes. important. But you used to have a piece of paper that you used with people that was like socializing and it was a mm -hmm. list of all the things that they should be Exposed introduced to. to. Mm -hmm. And do you still do that with your classes? I, I do. And that's in the first class. That's yeah. in the puppy class because that's when that window is. If you miss that window, are you out of luck? No, but it's harder because that brain development, that window is shut. Um, so you have to do it in a different way. See the dog that holds? Yes, look See? at the dog that's chewing yeah, the leaf. She's holding it. So she's when, holding it. I, so I, when, I would say she's chewing it. So when that happens, <laughs> so when that happens, she might need to go out too. Here, come here. So when that happens, we do this. Here. Hold, hold, yes, good girl, hold, good girl, hold. So, again, my first hunting dog. You are never supposed to discourage this. Good hold, good girl, hold. You are to encourage picking up, holding things, and keeping things in their mouth. Good girl, hold. The bruise on my arm just went away because it was me that she was holding for about three right. weeks. It was green, it was a green hold. So, we now, okay, ready? Out. Yes, good girl. Take it. Good, take it. You'll hold it. Hold, hold, hold. Out. Yes, good job. So um, we keep toys all around the house. Mm -hmm. And when she starts to want to grab us, take it. Good girl. We give her something else to hold. We talked about that so, one time with people that were doing therapy dog work, and we had dogs that wanted to lick everybody whenever they went places. Yes. And we said, Oh, she's you, a licker too. Yeah, and that's real common among dogs. And yep. that's something we have a problem with many times with therapy work is the dog that licks constantly. But we always tell them if you can't put something in their mouth, give them right. a tennis ball to carry through the nursing home or give them something because if they've got something in their mouth, they can't lick. If right. I'm coming to your house and, and Larry's going to jump, then put a leash on Larry and have her sit because she can't jump on me when she's right. sitting. And, it's just and, that type and of And I put a toy in her mouth so she can't grab a hold of you. Right. Yeah. You have to, and again, remember what your breed or breeds are. This is a retriever. They're bred to have things in their mouth. If you have to, put something in there. All right, so if we have time, I'm going to show you the newest thing that we're working on um, because this series is called Growing Up with Lyric. And we're trying to show you the progression that we're going through. So at this stage, my um, huge 
issues right now, my challenges with her right now are the jumping. The jumping is still, um, is still an issue. She's really, really excited when, when new people are around and the jumping is still an issue. So we're still struggling with that. And the other thing is her, her out in the open, when I ask her to come to me and her um, command for come is different, her command is here. It's not always happening. So I'm, I'm struggling with that. I don't understand her command is different. So whenever you just do her in your yard, you say come? No. And when she's doing ducks, you do here? No, it's the same word no matter what for her. Oh, okay. For her, it's here. Oh, okay. Um, which is different for me to learn, but it's here. It's, it's just here. And did you choose so. that word, or was that a word that is encouraged to use with this type yeah, of Yeah, the, the person that I'm working with, it's, it's kind of... What that person uses. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's here. It's, it's different so that not every dog out there that's, that's out there is using that same word, so it's, it's just a little bit different. So that's, that's what we're doing. Are you hot, baby girl? Are you? All right, so the other thing is, when you, if you ever bought, um, th th these dogs that have been hunting for a long time are, are absolutely mind-blowing, amazing to me. And a dog, a, a master hunt dog, will have to pick up three marks or three, either three bumpers, three ducks, and there can be a body of water between where they have to go and pick these up. So the dog has to go swim the water, get up on the land, go pick one up, bring it back, vice versa. Um, so you wanted to take her out and see if she has to potty and mm -hmm. I'll explain this part and then just, just tell her to go potty. Don't potty. jump. Oh, jeez. Oh, did I hit you That's with that? That's okay. Come on, Lurie, let's um, go potty. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's go potty. So, so they might, they might have to, to no, yes, often just tell her potty. So um, as they swim, if they're swimming and, and they're just, the, the mark is to a little bit to their left, their handler, if they're in the water, will blow their whistle one time and the dog will turn and look at their handler. And the handler will direct them over just a little bit this way because maybe they're not lined up perfectly with that mark. And then the dog will, and then the handler will say back, and the dog will turn back and swim in that direction, get out of the water, and go in that direction. If the dog is gets out of the water and still isn't lined up again, um, the handler will blow their whistle one time. And on land, that whistle it means the dog is supposed to sit, turn, look at their handler, and sit. In the water, it means that they're to just swim around so that they're they look at their. Did she go? Okay, so that they look at their handler. So we're working, you're crazy. We're working our whistle for sit, and we're working our whistle for come. Sit is one on the whistle, come is three. And, okay, now enough. Here, ready? Ready, here, ready? Yes, good girl. So I am rewarding this because we are just learning this. We're just, we're just learning this. So I'm rewarding it. And she's crazy when the hunting stuff comes out. Yes. Yes. Go girl. Come on. Was that three? Uh huh. Good girl. Good job. Now, um, we were doing some water work last week, and she she did her first duck retrieve in the water, and when she grabbed the duck, she grabbed stop. She grabbed it by the wing, and she was swimming. So it was. I watched her take her head and go under the water and try to to re get the duck, and. Um, and she got a better grip on it, but still not a full body grip. But she, she totally put her head underwater to do it. And I said something to, to Bob, who is my mentor. And I said, did you see how she did that? And he said, yeah, and that was good. But she, she still had the wing. He said, 
you need to make sure, and I didn't know this, and it was a little bit scary for me, you need to make sure that their recall out of the water is, there, there's no room for error. Why? What do I know, right? I'm really new at this. Because he said, at a hunt, if a duck is wounded and the dog goes to retrieve it out of water, out of the water, stop, the duck will dive and come back up and dive and come back up. And as the duck does that, it lures your dog further and further out. And your dog will get exhausted and your dog drowns. So you have to be able to blow that whistle and get your dog to leave that duck and come back in. Hmm. So um, not something I thought about. And this girl is duck crazy, loves her ducks. So now we're, we're really working this hard because yeah. I, don't wanna, I, don't wanna, I don't want that to happen. All right, one last thing I want to show you quick. How many of us absolutely positively struggle? <laughs> no, you're crazy now. It's your nap time. Dogs get nuts when they're tired. Um, how many of us struggle, me included, when somebody comes to our door and rings our doorbell and um, people come in Dogs get absolutely crazy. Leave that. So we're teaching her to go to her mat. Ready? Ready? Where's your mat? We're going to play. Ready? Now, at what age do you start teaching her to go to the mat? Um, as soon as possible. Oh. But off. OK, ready? Lyric. No. <laughs> now, see how she's offering? Do you see this? She saw me pick this up. So she's offering everything she knows to get to make this click. Ready? Go to your mat. That's not what. Fix it. Yes. I'm going to take this off. Warning, she could just take off, and I don't even know if the cameraman could keep up with her once she does, but. Break. Good girl. Ready? Go to your mat. She's trying everything. Yep, that's not what I said. How many times do you repeat that? I try not to. So she's not, she didn't, she's not paying attention. She didn't hear, she's treat focused at the moment. So I'm just gonna go over and stare at it because this is what I want her to do. And as soon as she does it, and my click was, my timing on my click was a little bit off. Um, Uh-oh. I know I dropped it, but that's beside the point. Yes, good girl. And here's this piece over here. Good girl. Good girl, go to your mat. Now, you don't want to name something that you're working. Uh, hey, you ate it. <laughs> Technically, and she's just learning this, go to your mat means go to your mat, lie down, and don't get off of it until I give you the release word to come off. So she's really not doing what she's supposed to do right now. She's a little bit scatterbrained at the moment. Lyric. And at home, Okay, let's try this again. Come on. There. Now, I didn't treat her for that. Hey! Yes. I didn't treat her for that because that was a, that was a mistake. So I didn't treat her for it. And I'm not going to treat her for that one. She's not used to me talking while we're doing this either. Up. Because she got up. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call her off quickly so that she's right. Ready? Ready? So we make it a game. Ready, ready? Go to your mat. Hurry up. No, you're being the poop. Go to your mat. I think the best thing about Go to your mat. you doing this is you're showing that how even a trainer can have trouble. This right. is not an automatic well, thing. Go to your mat. She's, she's learning. So this, she's learning. 
And, and even my experienced dogs still have days where they mess up. So the next time we so, do this with Lyric, she's going to be able to do just everything perfectly. So our next program, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, she's, ah. Uh, what are you supposed to do? Thank you. Hopefully, our next program, she's better at this. Break and heal. Yes. Here. Hopefully, you can see improvements. And that's the whole thing. It's, and it's different in here than it is at home. At home, I would have waited that out and not said a word. And if I had to, I, if I absolutely had to, I would have gone back to the very, very beginning of how I trained that mm -hmm. just to get her brain focusing on, oh, what is it that I'm supposed to be doing right now? She's, she's a little out of her element. What do you do with her, her wanting to put her, the leash in her mouth? Um, I don't do a thing with her because I need her to be mouthy. What about for a person that just has the dog? Uh, for a pet person mm -hmm. who is driving them crazy, um, there's a couple things you can do. You can spray this part of your leash, leash with bitter apple. Mm -hmm. um, stop. You can um, give them something to hold. Mm -hmm. If none of that works, when they have it in their mouth, you can just yank it out really fast. Sometimes okay. that works too. Um, you can redirect them. Look at me right here. Pay attention to me. You can do those things. With her, again, this is a different scenario for me. Um, never, ever discourage her from having things in your mouth, even if it's things that she's not supposed to have. I just ask her to bring them. For you, and, in your situation. In my situation. Right. Because I'm training her to do something that I need her to put things in her mouth. Okay, right? and right. now that we've talked about that, it says the dog's got something in its mouth and it's in a death grip. Yes. How the heck do you get it out? You put your finger in a collar. And in our very first level, we teach a game called Collar Grab Game that is a game to the dog, but it teaches the dog to never, ever duck and dive you when you grab for its collar. Mm -hmm. Never. Um, you take your thumb and your index finger and you push the dog's lower lip over their bottom teeth and they'll open. And what if that doesn't work? It'll work. They don't want to bite their own lip. It'll work. They, they don't want to bite themselves. So if you go like this and go like this, they'll open up. Okay. So it works. Right. Anything else you and, want to add? And, they, and that's the other thing that we teach in the kindergarten level. We teach out or give or mm -hmm. drop it. Whatever your word wants to be, I say out and my dogs will out. Um, so we teach that too. Anything so, else you want to add? Not Good. that a, I can. A, a very, very informative. Think of that's probably about all my brain can handle for today. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Thanks very much. We appreciate it. We encourage everyone to come back again and watch any of our programs and watch Lyric and growing oh, up. And the next one we'll probably do what in about another month or so. Another month or so. We'll see. We'll probably see where she's in at. September. Yep. Yep. And we'll see where she is then. Okay. Thanks very yeah, much. We'll see that. Huh? We'll tell her bye bye. Oh, I say bye.